of a 5,000 pound racing bike. And we have a switch electronic conversion kit. In today's video, we're gonna put them together and see what happens. There's a very specific sign on the back of this which says, this side down, do not tilt, do not store on side, do not store upside down. And we've done all of those things, so it probably doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Off the back of the last video we made for Switch, Francis got in touch with the company and asked if we could get hold of the new Switch kit. They said yes, and they also had offered us a fee to make this video and also for the right to use the footage on this video. There you go. <laughs> Essentially what this is, is a front wheel motor with some other stuff that you fit to your bike and it becomes electric. Or at least your front wheel does. I was say, do the gears become electric instantly? No, my gears are already electric, Jim. Oh shit. Yeah. So we've actually had one of these on the channel before. It was a 26 inch version that we put on quite an old 90s mountain bike, yes. heavy bicycle. Today's episode, we thought we'd put it on a really fast bike just to see what would happen. This is a really what it's made for. I feel like this is going to make the perfect hill climbing bike. Considering my commute home is a hill climb, I'm excited about this. It's staying, isn't it? I know what we should do. We should weigh the bike before and after. Is anything gonna change on that apart from the kit? It's not. No, 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 no. Head units on, pedals yeah, leave are it on. on. Currently, it weighs 7.26 kilos. It's a very light bike, isn't it? It's really light, yeah. As well as the wheel box, it also comes with a load of other bits and pieces, including a very detailed instruction manual, which if I remember from last time, was actually quite good. And it has been updated, which is good. Uh, this is the pedal assist sensor, which is zip ties and other things. <laughs> That's the bit, that goes around the axle, doesn't it? Display, we didn't, we didn't have a display last time, did we? No, we definitely didn't. Ooh, that's the same as your bike. It is. This is Jimmy's Omnium cargo bike, which has had an electric conversion and he has exactly the same looking thing, heads up display on his bike. That was in with the switch. Cool. The next box is a charger plug for the United Kingdom. Uh, next one is the rest of the charger. That's pretty. Is this, these are all the same types of cables as my e-bike. So I wonder if there's like, there must just be like a standard of e-bike cable. This looks very different to the one we had before. The one we had before obviously was big and it kind of feels like in, they've just taken some of the bigness out of the battery and put it into the mount. Then we've got the two batteries, the, the smaller one and the larger one. We haven't mentioned this yet, have we? So Switch have sent us both of the available batteries, one of which is called the Switch Air which uh, I think has a, an official range of 15 kilometers, if I remember rightly. And then there's the Switch Max, which if I recall correctly, has an official range of 30 kilometers. There isn't a huge difference between the size, but it is noticeable. On Air, which is the smaller one, weighs 739 grams. The Max weighs 1,136 grams. For double the range. Mm. It's decent. As long as you actually do get that range. So this kit will fit pretty much any bike, but it won't fit through axle bikes. That's the one exception to the rule. So we're using a rim brake bike for this demonstration. The wheel they've given us is an alloy braking surface, so we'll change the brake pads over. We're gonna put a tire on this. It's not tubeless ready but it is 700C, so it will fit. You can choose a variety of different axle widths, so depending on how big your dropouts are on your bike, you might have to choose the correct one. We went with nine millimeter, I believe, which were the correct ones for the carbon dropouts that are on this bike. So this is the bit where we have to fit a thing on the thing so it knows that things are happening. Measure the distance between your pedal arm and bike frame. Why? You think if we just do it, it'll work? Yep. Should we just do it? Yep. 12 seconds later. Uh, if two meter or less, check the inside of your pedal arm, indent, round or flat. Um, we're kind of going to have to botch it. I think this kit doesn't fit SRAM cranks because they've got the little wheelie doobie bit. What Jimmy means to say is the preload adjustment on the SRAM crank is in the way. It's really, really thick, and the parts they give you to kind of 
fix that ring which is full of magnets which creates the sensor and means it knows how fast you're pedaling and it knows how big your wheels are and therefore it dictates how fast you can go using the electronic motor it won't fit round so we're gonna have to kind of botch it i'm not optimistic about this one francis i think we've failed if this works it's going to be a miracle this is a little circlet that goes around the outside of the circle of magnets and then it holds it all on securely. I scratched my crank. Here is the inner ring that you're supposed to use to fit around the crank. The SRAM crank is big. This isn't exactly what it's designed for. They've tried to make it as universal as possible. So I had to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's probably more aimed at people using alloy cranks, which tend to be a little bit thinner and differently shaped to these carbon fancy ones we have on this bike. So it turns out we won't need all of these bits at all, but we are using more cable ties and they supply ample cable ties for all your cabling tie needs. Well, they're zip ties for the Americans. We've got more problems. What now, Jimmy? It's, it's because this bike is not suitable. So we have to put a magnetic, the sensor for the magnetic ring is meant to go on the seat tube. And in the diagram, it's like a very traditional steel style bike where there's plenty of space. Because this is a carbon bike with big fat weird tubes and a big beefy bottom bracket, there is absolutely nowhere that this will fit down there for it to be by the magnets and not just get caught in it. So we're, we're probably gonna have to try it, get, just get it really close and hope that that is close enough. So this, this loop here is the magnet, that's the sensor. So ideally this is meant to be in line with the magnets. But if I was to do that, it is literally fully contacted and wedged in. It has this little pivot with the 3M tape on the back, which sticks to the frame. But I'm thinking, what if we remove this piece completely, file the plastic down, and then it will be narrower and we can just stick that on with maybe with a cable tie. That's a very good idea, Francis. Let's do it. Don't try this at home, kids. Or adults. Get it nice and flush. I can't stress enough, do not try this at home. It will void your warranty. We have been sent this kit, so we're not too bothered about the warranty. Do not do this. So we can test this to see that it actually works before we fix up the rest of it. We decided just to kind of like wire it in loose and see if it actually works. So, moment of truth. Now we need to attach the weird octopus bit to the handlebars. So the kit comes with a bunch of different spaces for different size handlebars. We're having to use none of them for these handlebars, which are pretty standard drop handlebars that are made of aluminium. Now I'm just finding the bit where you can make it go faster. We're gonna put it on the faster setting and then go outside. Do you want to ride it or shall I? We've come to the Pennines for some challenging conditions to test the switch kits in. This is not your normal use case, but we're definitely going to find out how long the batteries last on some very steep and windy terrain. There is sheep everywhere and it is absolutely blowing a gale. The door just closed on its own. I feel like it's a bad idea. First test, the air, 15k range. I've got the other battery in my pocket. You may have noticed the bike that Jimmy's on is not the same as the one we started with at the start of this video. We couldn't get it to fit, so we needed a bike with a more standard crank set, more space in between the frame and the crank. And this one, the speeds to 50, was fine. So that's why we're on that. It's still a road bike, slick tires, so very different from the first bike that we put this on. The big heavy off-road one. It's a bit heavier than the first bike, but he's still giving me a kicking. Have you noticed how much quieter that one is for the first version we got? It's silent. It's basically silent. Yeah. Interesting. So the first one we had in the video that we posted on the off-road bike, it was a lot noisier. It just kind of sounded like a loud motor. This one, silence. He's absolutely killing me. I feel like it's going to run out soon. It's down to one bar. One bar. Yep. Oh, it's big. 
switch kit. Perfect for escaping dogs if you happen to ride through Dogland. Nothing. Dead. That is officially dead. Give me the stats. That is showing that we have travelled 10.9 kilometres. That's not bad. That's. I mean, that's <laughs> not far right. off their estimate. And so, this is really... So we've got... The temperature is about 8 degrees. We've got a massive headwind. There's insane amounts of elevation. The surface is crap. Well, it's like greasy. Like, this couldn't be worse conditions to test this. And we've actually got to the top of a climb. So like if you descended, you'd have a couple of K more as well. It's better than I thought it was going to be, yeah. considering the conditions we put it under. The question is, will the bigger battery be double this? Are we going to now do 20 kilometers? I haven't got it. It's literally in the car. It's not. It's not in the car. I haven't got it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the fear in your eyes! Even, the fear in your eyes! Even without a battery, this is a rideable bike, Francis. Round two, this one is the max 30 kilometer range. Let's see how far we get. This is just me, I haven't even got a motor. In both of these tests, Jimmy is using a variety of different power levels. There's five in total. He's done a little bit in five to mess me up on the climbs. And then he's in a two or three when we're on the flats. How is it sunny and raining at the same time? I'm back at the car now. Jimmy's battery still hasn't run out. So he's just gonna do hill reps. He can finish it on his own. That's giving me that kick in. This power pack is lasting significantly longer than the other one, which is what we were expecting. How much longer? We'll have to find out when he comes back. Well, we've still got a bit of power. <laughs> We're going to swap bikes now. Oh. oh, wow. This is better. One hour later. I think this one's raspberry. Smell that. Ideal recovery food after that massive ride. So the results are in. 21.5 kilometers for the max after I ride the last little bit up and down the hill at the end. That's pretty good considering the really challenging conditions and uh, how hilly it was. I'm surprised. This one's official distance was 15 kilometers and it did 10 points something or other. This one's official, it's 30 and it did 21 and a bit. However, are these designed to be used on road bike rides in the middle of nowhere in the Pennines? Probably not. No. Their target market, these guys, all their advertising seems to be with commuter bikes in a city. Are you gonna get 30K and 15K out of these in Newcastle or in London? Probably yes. But even if you didn't, it doesn't matter because the chances of you doing a 20 kilometer commute is very small. You're not using this on a, a bike that's designed to be ridden 100 kilometers in the middle of nowhere. However, you can. We had a smashy ride today and it was fun. The batteries did run out, but you could put that in your pocket, which I did. I would say though that the whole kit is not too heavy that when the battery does run out, the bike is rideable. You do notice a bit of resistance from that front wheel because it's just the way that it works, mm -hmm. but it's not too much that it becomes unrideable. Yeah. Whereas- It's my, not like an e-mountain bike running out of battery. That's like, oh no, or I'm in trouble. My car, my e-cargo bike, which weighs about 30 kilos. So although it's got amazing range of gears, if you haven't got power, you notice it. The question is who is going to buy this product? and it is always going to be someone that's doing short rides, probably around town where it's not that flat, uh, perhaps commuting, perhaps pop into the shops, and they can just quickly unclip it, charge it in your house without having to take your bike in and out, because you're probably leaving your bike in a shed or in a, in a bike store rather than in your bedroom like you would with a 5,000 pound fancy road bike. Why would you buy one of these instead of buying a, an existing e-bike kit just from, you know, Alibaba or whatever on the internet because you can buy similar kits online where you've got the front wheel motor and then you have to hook it all up yourself but I think a lot of people won't be confident installing those because they're a lot more complicated whereas this is in a very convenient package it took us 10 minutes to install the last one a little bit longer because we did it on two bikes this time but it's a 10 minute job it is really easy. I know there's a lot of merit in places like AliExpress but me personally I would always be willing to pay a little bit more and 
buy something from a company that I know is going to back up a warranty. So that marks the end of today's video. Would you use one of these on your bike? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos like this from us.